welcome to this Education Gazette podcast. I'm Jude Barback and today I'm visiting Sylvia Park School in Auckland to look at the approach they're taking with their local curriculum, specifically around Aotearoa New Zealand histories. Whether you've been here five minutes or you've never been anywhere else, you know, the idea that we have a shared history that is shared by all of us was the thing that we really wanted to emphasise. Once I had built my content knowledge, it was much easier to share with the tamariki. So I'm delighted to be joined here today by Principal Barbara Alalator. Barbara, can you set the scene for our listeners and uh, tell us a bit about your beautiful school here and your inquiry process, please? My name is Barbara Alanator and I'm lucky enough to be the principal of the best little school in the universe, Sylvia Park School, here in Mount Wellington in Auckland. Um, Sylvia Park School is um, in a very urban setting. Um, we are surrounded by retail, uh, industry and a six lane highway um, and we think of ourselves as a real little oasis. We have about 540 of the world's finest children here. Um, accompanied by some pretty amazing teaching staff and support staff and a wonderful community that you could not wish for any better. Um, Our children are, uh, I think we're about 50 or 60 percent Pacific children. We are uh, about 25 percent Māori and then we have a little collection of a whole lot of others. Um, So we are diversity plus in every single way, not just ethnicity. So we have a 10-week inquiry process, so four terms in a year, 10-week inquiry process every single term. Um, We think that kids get bored if they have, you know, if you stretch things out too much. Within that 10 weeks, um, we have, uh, we start with the first week and we we call it Ignite. So we try to get them excited and wondering about what's coming. Um, So we do something, we try to think up sort of fantastical ideas that, um, you know, provoke them and sort of disrupt everything they they know of about in relation to a question. Then the next part of the inquiry is exploring the question. We did an inquiry last year and it was called Aotearoa, Our Story, with an emphasis on the hour. One of those drivers is we try to think about what are the things our kids should never leave our schools not knowing. So, you know, the idea that we are in a particular place, you know, means that it's incumbent on us to think about the stories, um, the lessons, the histories that we can learn um, about from being in this place. It's about building a sense of pride. It's about um, building a sense of mana about the place in which you're living. So we're walking along the history trail here at Sylvia Park School and we've just been to Gondwana land and we've visited the dinosaurs, including the Tanifosaurus. Barbara, where are we going now? Um, we're on our way to the smartphone invention of the time, uh, which is Kupe's Waka Haurua, the double hold waka. So here we've got Freddie. Freddie was one of the students here who helped create this beautiful waka. So this is the waka that um, Kupe sailed on from Hawaii to uh, Aotearoa. And um, on these panels uh, show the story of Aotearoa. And um, I'm a little puffed, but <laughs> this, is, this is my one. Uh, um, it's about how uh, this is... Uh, Kupe. Um, this is how he was chasing Te Whiki, a very, very annoying octopus. And while he was chasing, his um, wife, Kuramarutini, was on. And um, so he started the journey chasing Te Whiki here, then in the middle of the sea. And finally, uh, Kuramarutini actually um, was looking out into the distance and she saw uh, a beautiful piece of land and that land she said he ao, he aotea, he aotearoa and that is how we got the name aotearoa and if it wasn't for kupe and kuramarutini and maybe even if it wasn't for te whike, we wouldn't be standing on the slam right now. Ha pai, thank you Freddie, that was outstanding. The history trail now brings us to a magnificent artwork that spells in enormous letters the word Aotearoa and represents thriving Māori communities. Here we've got Year 6 student Alex to tell us all about it. So the installation is basically the word Aotearoa 
each letter has something representing th- thriving Māori communities. And what's your favourite letter and why? I think it would be the A at the end because they didn't have like they didn't have like pills or anything back then. They used native plants to use it as their medicine. And Jaden, what's your favourite letter? Probably be the T and the O. My I like the O because it's just so so clever on how they use the food and T is my class did it. So where are we going now, Barb? And now we're on our way to uh, a site where we will see evidence of the first encounter. So this is the first encounter. So this is, um, this is these po uh, signify the arrival of Cook and um, the meeting, uh, Cook and Tupaya and the meeting of Te Maru and um, the time in which Te Maru was killed in that encounter. So, you know, it was really our kids understanding that um, if you don't speak a common language and if you don't have a full understanding about each other, you know, trouble will come to pass. So the big idea is around the first encounter, but as it relates to to our kids, what are the lessons for us? You know, lots of lessons, that's just one of them. So what's the next step for this inquiry and the history trail? We are doing Te Tiriti or Waitangi. So, you know, at the moment the kids are, you know, they're travelling back in time. They're trying to kind of put their their feet in the um, shoes, sandals, whatever of people who were involved in um, you know the events leading up to the signing of what happened afterwards. Um, and we're still in that kind of thinking about what the physical sort of manifestation will be in terms of our history trail of telling the story of Aotearoa. But you know the big thing here is that our kids uh, will never leave the school not knowing the important things about us as a nation. And, you know, we want really positive things out of that. We want to feel proud about, like, this country, to know that, um, you know, a powerful image of what it is to be Māori um, and to all feel a sense of belonging to because we all share in that story. So, um, yeah, it's big. So in the context of your inquiry process, how will you approach Tetiriti? Uh, you've talked about igniting the students' curiosity. What next? At the moment we're looking at Te Tiriti or Waitangi, so they'll be looking at that. They'll be looking at other agreements. And then after a couple of weeks of um, researching around that, they'll start to synthesise and sort, sort and synthesise um, information and then start to think about, you know, so what? So what you've learned all that stuff, what are you going to do with it? So then they start turning it into a creation. So you have to think about what do I do with that knowledge and that understanding about, you know, particular the learning I've been undertaking and how do I create something with my peers um, that uh, ends up creating a better context whether it be a tangible um, thing or whether it be um, an action that improves the lives of myself, my friends, my whanau, our community, the world. Um, and then after that we have another week and we celebrate so we you know, we might do the big reveal of whatever it is that we've done um, and then the, the last part in that last week we do is evaluate. Did we answer that question? Did we do a good job? Or was it sort of mediocre? What do we take forward in terms of making it better next time we start to inquire? Before embarking on this inquiry, the staff here did a lot of work in building their own understanding. I'm joined here by Tessa to tell us more. Uh, Kia ora, I'm Tessa Leona and I'm one of the Deputy Principals at Sylvia Park School. Uh, so firstly, before we even started, I had to build my own content knowledge around the histories first. So um, I learned heaps of new things along the way about our history, about um, the Polynesian arrivals, the settlers, the th- Māori thriving communities. Um, and then once I had built my content knowledge, it was much easier to share with the tamariki and um, get them motivated and excited to learn about their own history. As a staff, we are learners, so um, it's about kind of removing this thing. I often call it the teacher disease where, you know, teachers feel like they should know everything. So not knowing is like, you know, kind of, you know, shameful if you can't, I don't know that, you know. Um, So the idea that we all buy in as learners and we make no assumptions about knowledge that we have or don't have has been really critical to that. So, you know, the Aotearoa um, New Zealand Histories podcast from Radio 
New Zealand was fantastic, you know? So it was like, wow, let's all watch this and see what we can do with that. So you've got to have a whole lot of different things in place. Aspiration, you've got to be the biggest Pollyannas in town. You've got to have, um, <laughs> you've got to have uh, structures and you've got to have a team uh, with, that has a culture of being really committed to learning and really committed to saying, well, I don't know that. So, you know, I'm going to have to do some work around. But also we, we do it together. So that was Barbara Alalatoa from Sylvia Park School. Uh, I'm Jude Barback from Education Gazette. Tukutuku korero. Do get in touch at gazette at education.govt.nz if you'd like to share what you're doing at your school, kura or early learning centre. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, and please do sign up for our e-newsletter. Simply go to gazette.education.govt.nz and click on the email alerts tab for podcasts, videos and much more.